cameras. Okay. The February 15th, 2024 meeting of the Finance Committee is called to order at 6.38 p.m. We have the land acknowledgement and anti-racism statement that is posted on the website. So we'll move to item one, the ad adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda or are there any changes? Move, oh. Moved, okay. Um, all, all in favor of adoption of the agenda? Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, the approval of the January 17th, 2023 minutes. Um, I believe a draft form is posted on the website. Any changes to the January 17th minutes? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes from January 17th. Okay. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. The January 17th, 2023 minutes are approved. Okay. Anyone have any announcements? I have one announcement. Um, we do have a resignation from the Finance Committee. Mitch Waterman has announced his, um, has submitted his resignation. That leaves one open position. Um, we will go ahead and work on getting the opening posted and take in, um, hopefully have a new member vetted by the, the board of directors before the next finance committee meeting. Hey, Rob, I think uh, NNE is also um, supposed to solicit uh, candidates for finance, just Okay. Yeah. So whatever we'll you did for the board. Yeah. Yes. Um, and with that, also, um, there are openings um, on the Long Range Planning Committee as well as ACC. Um, uh, we will get an announcement out um, on that as well. And then with Director Shahan's resignation. There will be. Um, I don't Keith. know that that's been announced yet. Well, but Keith asked me to to go ahead and okay. uh, start, start working on um, the so that so he's asked us to go to any to go ahead with, forward and get that. So you're making it. You're making a general announcement as a member of the NNE committee. Um, versus I, as finance. A member of the NNE committee do, uh, during finance announcements. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yes, um, that's just, it just it just came up that there are. I just want to make sure those watching know that the <clears throat> board resignation wasn't submitted to the finance committee. It was no. your your knowledge of that pin comes from your nominations and committee involvement. Right, and as okay. a, yes, so uh, uh, we will be getting um, the link out to the um, proper uh application forms for that and um and then for acc um long range planning there is the volunteer form uh, on the sun valley website that one could volunteer for those committees if they're interested okay thank, thank you very you. much rob do you know how many uh openings we have on each of those committees uh I think there's five on long range. Don't hold mm -hmm. me to it. I think it's okay. like five. Uh, and then there are four on on ACC. I, I believe Keith said that. Okay. Yep. There's there's oppor there are opportunities for those that want to get involved. And um, I hope they do. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Okay, moving on to prop item number four, property owner comments. I understand we have two property owners um, tuning in. Do we have any comments from the property owners? Wait to make sure Joanne confirms we have no one. Yeah, no one's raised their hand. Okay. I'm taking minutes also, so please bear with me as I, if I look down and start writing. Okay. Um, so review of December financial statements. Joel, you're going to go over those. 
You're muted, Joel. Joel, you're muted. Oh, okay. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Okay. And I take it every everyone can see the the white balance. You can here. see it. Can you can you expand a little bit? Sure. That yeah, it's a bit of an eye, bit of an eye. Perfect. Thank mm -hmm. right you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So so since I know we have eleven capital requests on this agenda, which is probably the most I've ever seen on any agenda, double probably the most I've ever seen. But uh, so I'll I'll go through the. December financial statements uh, in an expeditious manner. But uh, so basically, you know, I always start off with the balance sheet. Um, probably the most interesting thing on the balance sheet I pointed out last year, I mean, not last year, but last month for the November statements. But this line item, the prepaid golf membership, this is giving you a quick snapshot of all the prepaid golf revenue that Brian has taken in uh, October through December of 2023. So you can see last year, you know, this is stuff like annual green fees, cart fees, storage fees, and so on, and um, trail fees. And so you can see that he took in 153,000 at the end of 2022. Uh, so he still took in quite a bit, 100, almost 113,000 at the end of 2023. So, um, and just in case, it seems like this question has come up before too, but so at the last, board meeting, I haven't seen the, the motion yet, you know, I like come across the desk, but so at the last board meeting, so a part of the motion was to go ahead and transfer that 105,600 from, um, from the operation surplus into the surf fund for the marina part of the fees. And so just in case anyone was wondering where that comes from, so that'll, that'll be coming out of this operating cash line item up here. So it'll just come out of the general operating cash. And then for the February statements, then you'll you'll see I'll, I'll start building in, I'll call it net transfers out of operations and then into capital. Um, so you can see how that happened in 2022 as well. So you can see where 400, 482,660 came out of operations and it went right into capital CERT. And that was back then related to the Welcome Center purchase. So the same sort of thing will happen February. You'll see 105,006 hundred come out of here from uh, operations, then it'll show up down in here for capital as it goes in this chart. Now we'll go on to the, the most interesting financial statement, which is the income statement, obviously. And you can see, so just, we'll just go right to the bottom line here today. So we ended out the year um, at $231,629 surplus. And that 105,600 that I just mentioned will conceivably, basically, we're, we're, we'll use that surplus, that 105,600. And um, so obviously we budget for, we had a zero budget last year as we do all the other years. So that's why we have a better than budget of the exact same amount, 231,629. And uh, in relation to that, like when I presented the financial statements, Last year at about this time, um, on those financial statements, we had a surplus of 59,149. And um, so, so the interesting thing is actually for Sun Valley, which is good, is basically from 2019, year on 2019 through the year on 2023, 2020 was the only year there where we had a deficit of around 70 some thousand. That, of course, that was a that was a hard COVID year during that time. But any of the other years we've had. A small surplus or you know so basically we've had a surplus in the other four out of those five years so so actually the lot over the last five years we've had a good trend of having a surplus at the end of the year in hey. terms of the collection rate so our collection rate was 90 so we budgeted for 95 percent in 2023 our collection rate would finish out the year 97.9 percent 2022 was 97.6 uh, back in 2021 is 96.8, 2020 is 95.5. So you see, so we've had this, uh, and also a nice kind of general trend upwards from 2020 as well for a collection rate wise. 
Hey, Joel, can I ask a question before we get too far about the Marina sure. transfer? So you talked about how we'll see it on the balance sheet. It'll come out of cash and then you'll show it as like transfers into operation or out of operations. Yeah. Did we see an expense in the income statement for that. Well, no, actually. So, so that will, that won't be on the income statement at all. What will happen is basically how, like if I were to make this transfer right now, uh -huh. uh, basically I would, this, 685,747 would drop by that 105,600. Mm -hmm. And then SURF would see the increase to that uh -huh. 105,600. And then it also just, it would look just like these two line items down here, only 105,600. Okay. Uh, coming out of operations and 105,600 going into capital. But since, but at this point, when we transfer it, it'll just be a straight balance sheet uh, transfer. So it won't affect the income statement. Okay. And then it will be a 2023 three transaction or a 2024 transaction uh so it'll be a 2024 so I'll, so okay. the transfer will show up in the february 2024 financial statement okay. even uh, though we're using surplus generated from 2023 operations yes. it'll yes. show up as a 24 okay thank right. you yeah and, and joel, joel I, I have a i have a question how yeah. does that hundred five thousand? um how does it show up that it's being held for the for the marina so it'll just so now when that gets transferred that uh that surf amount it, it'll just it'll be commingled in with regular surf funds um actually since i already have this open right here so like here's the capital planning spreadsheet for 2024 so you'll see basically this line item that i'm highlighting you'll see there's that 105 600 for a surf the funds uh, coming in from that from that plan transfer fee increase, but so the thing is now since we made that since well the transfer will be made that will essentially take over that spot so to speak like that's how it's going to be accounted for on the surf capital planning spreadsheet basically so now the funds are coming in in one shot in February. I think I think maybe what what um, some are asking. I'm making this assumption that someone asking this is that it's going to be in our surf in the general fund. It's not a separate line item. It's just so right. right can, are we? But you are actually keeping. We'll be able to keep track of how much money has gone in with the intent of it being for the dock replacement. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's just not. Excuse yeah. me. But just a real quick question, Joel, just to follow up. When um last month we saw a that there was still a bad debt amount of about seven thousand for the um for the slip income, you have that has all been corrected, and it looks like correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I'll, I'll turn to that page here in a second. That's right. Okay. Back to you. So uh, let's see here. I guess that's what we were talking about cash. Might as well. So the next page, and I believe this is your addendum too. And also, if you go onto the website and to the finance committee webpage in the archives, and you can pull up the what I'm looking at here is actually the full blown set of statements, 33 pages long. But anyone can access this on the finance committee <laughs> webpage under the December 2023 link as well. But so basically, so if we look at the surf line item, that net available cash 1231, 2022, 3,236,221. I'll just quickly go right back to the balance sheet. So there's that amount there for surf. And then you'll also notice 3,624,027, the ending amount for 2023. So we'll use surf as a quick example. So there's that 3,624,027. And then you'll see all the stuff in between that basically causes that to happen. So you'll see the dues received, uh, the, uh, interest income for the SURF account, uh, mitigation. Th these are all mitigation assessments going out, and then it goes in to this mitigation sign of the savings fund. Now, when these get cleared, they'll come right back in again to the SURF account. And these are for like, oh, like this is basically, this is area Z. Um, and then obviously there is the roads culvert uh, 315 is is the big one for this. But as soon as these projects get done and the county signs off on it, then they'll they'll 
basically give us the permission to give to the bank to release that assignment of savings fund. So that money is ours. It's in our an assignment of savings fund at the bank under, you know, it's under our name and everything. So all the interest we earn is is ours and everything. It's just earmarked in the bank is just kind of, it's basically just, it's got an earmark on it to where the bank won't release that. We can't just go in and say, I want to withdraw this money until it actually gets released from the county. But then when that happens, the funds will be transferred right back to the uh, assignment of savings funds back into the surf or roads where it came from. Um, and then basically this 97650, 970,650, this is all the cash going out the door for, for everything, like uh, all the money spent on capital projects, uh, surf loan payments, and so on and so forth. And then you have the, uh, this is the big thing, the obligated expenses, holdings. And so on the finance committee web, on the agenda, that's, this should be, I believe it's addendum one that you'll see. So anyone can see this as well. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so one million six fifty three seven one five, and um, so this is the addendum one on the website. So this is the cert. These are all the cert projects right here that the board that the board has approved, and whether it has spending or not. So, like for example, the maintenance shop generator, the ten additional golf cart lease uh, that was approved in December, the generator approved in October. But here's a good example to where you don't see any invoicing on it yet because we haven't received any invoices for the project but because the board has approved it i've already marked it here as it's already set aside so to speak as though all this cash will be spent and then so basically this is that here's all the approved money 2.53 million we spent 879 thousand of this approved amount so we anticipate spending another you know writing checks for another 1.65 million for the rest of these projects and that's why, so that's why you see it already earmarked right here for SURF, that this is the amount of money, the total amount that could go out the door for all these projects. And then you have this board recommended carryover balance, basically just an amount to not fall below. And this gives you the usable cash at the end of 2023, 1.37 million for SURF. And so basically, like for example, at the end of 2022, SURF was, this same amount right here was about two million. So, uh, so the reason why it's close to about seven hundred thousand dollars less is just a function of what the board has approved and, and what's been obligated to be spent on it. Roads, it was about one point five million, so we're not really too far off of where we were last year at this type of roads. Mailboxes, obviously, we don't have any spending on that yet. And UDR is another one of the big funds. So we were at about 216,000 last year. So we're about 291,000 at the end of 2023. And what comes into UDR is this is obviously, so the board approves the spending of UDR, no different actually on that capital burning spreadsheet. So the first page is CERF, the second page is roads, all the different roads projects. And now some of these say, like for example, some were like, here's a good one, road and drainage NOA projects, just in case anyone was curious. So. Road and drainage NOA projects, you'll see that this has basically been spent out, you know, so this project is done. So, so these types of projects are within the uh, next couple of months. This is where I'll then go back and look, what month did we actually close this? When, when did we finish this thing? And then that's when I'll, I'll capitalize it. So basically right now it's, it's sitting in construction and progress on the balance sheet. And then I'll move it out of construction progress and move it into whatever fixed asset category, in this case, roads that it should be in. And then I'll start depreciating it from that month that we actually finish this project. So that's kind of one of the, this kind of behind the scenes stuff, but it's one of the, the type of true up entries that happen over the next couple of months of moving stuff out of CIP that should be moved out and into whatever fixed asset class, same thing will happen for a surf, like you can see, Stuff right out the bat, like Snowy Sander, the um, Welcome Center HVAC, but uh, but then that will be moved out too, and then it'll start depreciating in the month that it was finished. And then the third page of this is also the UDR project. So you can see the only thing that was approved April twenty twenty three was fire waste, and and we still have this 
This old amount from 2016 Area Z mitigation hanging out, there's still about 7,200. That doesn't mean it has to be spent, but that just means that what was approved back in 2016 and it's still carried since we haven't fully expended all of these funds. And that 15,068 for, uh, there it is right here again, for an obligated amount in UDR, meaning what the board has approved that actually could be spent. Of course, FireWise is, you know, done for 2023. So these could be unobligated in a sense, but that's why that's there in case anyone had a question about that. Now, the next couple of pages, of course, I, I always mention these, but this is basically, you're seeing the income statement again, but it's, it's in this case now it's presented on a departmental basis. Um, so this is only for the month. So now you can see what department is responsible for what portion of that operating income. We'll go to the next page since the year is done. So this is now year to date, January through December, 2023. Year to date, you can see uh, like the one department that I always uh, call out here, golf, like for example, golf had better year than they had last year and, and last year is better year than they had the year before and so on. So, so golf is, you know, is the best year that golf has ever had. And last year is the best year that they ever had up to that point and year before that. Go ahead. So in comparison, you'll see actual revenue for golf. They had uh, real close to 1.5 million in revenue for golf. Last year, they had 1.22 million. So the revenues have gone up by real close 250,000. I'm rounding these numbers just for the sake of simplicity. Then the total cost for golf, which is the salary and benefits, and then all other expenses here. So the 776252 and then the 445145 here. So that comes up to about 1.22 million. Last year, their expenses were about real close to 1.1 million. So their expenses were up over last year, as you would expect that to happen, obviously, since salaries and everything went up. So their expenses were 100, about 145,000 more than last year this time. But then again, the revenues were close to 250,000 more than last time, last year at this time. But the bottom line for golf is their net income was 246,713. Um, now their budgeted net income for golf just up all the time. I believe it was 7,100 or so that was actually back when doing the 2023 budget. Yeah, so 7,551, that's what was budgeted for netting and for golf. They had 246,713. Last year they had also 123,779 net income for golf. And last year they were budgeted to break even. So you can see that they've done a lot better the past couple of years than even what we budgeted for. And uh, and Marina, so Marina right below it, the other revenue center. So you'll see they had actual revenues, 188,297 from Marina fees, doc fees, and so on. Uh, last year they had 155,330. So the Marinas took in about $34,000 more revenue than they did last year. And their net income for Marina was real close to 176,000. Last year is about 124,000 rounding. So that means they're Net income was about 52,000 higher this year than it was last year. So, um, so revenue wise, Marina is doing obviously well. Um, okay. And actually, hey, who was that? Lori, was that you? It says, no. Yeah. Oh, I asked, I was, I was going to look at if you have stuff you want to go into, but I wanted to go into ACC. Also, accounting exactly $34,000 over. What's that about? That's rounded. No, the number is exactly 34,000. So if we go right to the accounting page, it was 34,000. Oh, 82. 82. <laughs> that, you put the 82 cents yeah. to make it not look suspicious. Okay. But I will actually want to talk about ACC. There's a couple of lines. Um, the, uh, I think it's the home, the ACC contractor. Yeah. So it's right down here two things so is almost the whole of the the entire year-to-date amount was submitted in december 
Yeah, he was late. <laughs> he was late with his. Uh, his I take that back. There's like three hundred dollars less. So yeah, and so what? What does the ACC contractor do? Rem- do you just so basically? Up. Basically, he is filling in for the fact that we don't have the um, you know the salary line on it for the ACC for that environmental planner. So if we have the environmental planner, which is budgeted, you can see it right here uh, for close to 90,000. Um, okay. If we didn't have the environmental planner, then we wouldn't be utilizing the ACC consultant near as much. What uh, What so, would the environmental planner do? Yeah, isn't the ACC consultant, Joel, he's been with us for a while. He's been with us since uh, 2020. He actually came on when Glenn was here then, and then, but before him was John Gordon, John Gordon. also filming. Yeah, him. so that that mm-hmm. ACC consultant position with roughly coming in, we'll just use around number of sixty thousand. That has been an ongoing for quite some time. I don't know how yeah. we can classify that as filling in, because I don't believe is there an intent to if there's no intent to change that. Mm-hmm. There um, is an intent. There is a, an open position called environmental planner. Which has now um, uh, is Joel. This is Joanne. It has a job description for that that incorporates what Joel Carter is currently doing, as well as additional duties. Because Joel Carter does not work full time; he works very part time. So that would replace him completely. Yes, it would. Um, but that person would need to be brought on board. So this year, when we fill that position, there will be a period of overlap, and then uh, Joel. Carter's position would be phased out, and he is fully aware of that. That is not a, a shock to him. So, but his primary duties, guys, since since you asked, he does home inspections for the new building project. So he goes out and um, makes sure that progress is being made. He does all of the the um, the inspections, which are generally timed based on the request from the contractors. And he also does compliance inspections uh, for for properties on request. Um, and then he he works with builders uh, and homeowners who are submitting plans for new construction. So the new construction and the walkthrough stuff that that is what the ACC consultant has done for some time, and it's offset by the uh, it's up there the new home fee, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so then the additional duties that he's picked up is compliance reviews. Yeah. So occasionally we'll uh, have to inspect a property when there's a complaint about a mm-hmm. disorderly home or some other violation. Um, for example, uh, people uh, continue to erect unapproved fences. And mm-hmm. then we have to go out and document the fence and take pictures and then I turn out a violation to that, a notice of violation, and the homeowner is given a time period to correct it. Okay, so kind of what just the ACC coordinator and slash security compliance officer used to do, some portion of those duties, I guess? Well, specifically, the ACC uh, consultant has a very strong knowledge of um the rules and regulations around exterior appearance and alterations. Yeah, so did the previous ACC coordinator that they they served so, ACC. Yeah, once, only. Can you move to a point? I don't I don't know what this is about. This is doesn't sound no, no, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out the the role. I mean, it's a it's a pretty large expense just in in uh, December. So <laughs> I'm trying to understand what role that person. So Karen, when we, we, we signed the invoice from them, it was actually four yeah. compliant invoices separated by quarter. So yeah. it's just that they in where a normal contractor would have turned in um, you know, January, February, March in the month of April, he turned it in, in December. Yeah. And in April, May, June, instead of turning it in July, he turned it in December. To, uh, to in my opinion, totally unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And okay. by the way, like like whenever I try to do any sort of like forecasting or whatever on revenue, like this line item I always knew about, meaning like I would always 
like I'd look back, where did he charge us last year? Then I always assume, well, it's going to be at least that much, you know, like when I was doing projections. Basically, he just was late in getting us invoices. Okay. So you're approving about 15000 a month. Okay. I mean, a quarter. Sorry. Yeah. I'm still fuzzy. It's really not relevant to this. Still fuzzy about the environmental planning. What of this role is environmental planning? But that's besides the point. That is a, a budget yeah, I think what Joanne was saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joanne, is that the environmental planning officer is going to going to absorb the role of the ACC um, compliance plus other duties. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of like like uh, what John Gordon did as well. Yeah. So that that's been written and done for years. It, it predated my arrival on the scene. Uh, there was an environmental planner at one time and that position um, absorbed the old ACC coordinator position and added addition and added the inspector duties to it. So yeah, I've just never okay. understood. It. I don't understand what we do that's environmental planning. But I want to move on to the next question, which is safety and security services. So 32,000 for the year. Uh, on a budget of 11.5, that's the line right above that. What are safety and security services? I mean, so basically like looking at the GL for this. So this mm -hmm. is guardian security, it's security solutions. That's so a it, huge line here, I guess. It's not, right. But it, so it's not our, it's not Pacific. No. So yeah, what? I know, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's not yeah. the... Um, what is that? Like, no, give me an example of this. It's not this one. It's not the professional security. The, the fire alarms, and it is the mm -hmm. other security alarms, the camera system. Okay. Like backflow yeah. testing, that sort of stuff. So, yeah. like, on-call type services, if an alarm were to be triggered or monitoring. Yeah, or if it breaks. So, one of the contracts that I inherited, I did not seek to switch alarm companies, but it was in progress when I arrived and the association had contracted with Guardian Security to replace um, security solutions. And uh, as part of that, they uh, implemented a new key card reading system and upgraded some of the cameras and gave us new software uh, to look at camera footage. The new system is much better than the older system that we had. And we've been able to use that video to um, identify the perpetrators of several different uh, vandalism incidents uh, and recoup some of the costs of those incidents. So that's good. Yeah. But every time something goes wrong, it's a $500 fee just to come out here. So mm -hmm. uh, it's much, much more costly than was anticipated. And that's mm -hmm. um, why you see a budget overrun. We did add additional money to the 2024 budget for that line item, mm -hmm. but the costs are so high that I anticipate we'll be going over. It's probably not enough. Do we, will we as members need to get new key cards or the sy new system works with our existing cards? Or is it oh, a different uh, The new system? system was implemented last spring. So it, it we just up, uploaded the old card data. It's fine. Okay. And obviously, okay. Pacific Security is in this line item. Yeah. Okay. And actually, well, they're over two. Okay. Hmm. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Was that a contract renegotiation or something? Yeah, I explained that uh, twice now. So <laughs> I know. There's no notes, so I forget. Uh, okay. You know, when one, was that one renegotiated? Good thing, one good thing now that we're on this page anyways is this hazardous tree removal pruning so i mean obviously it's not good that we spent so much but obviously this is this is an expensive line item seems to be over the past few years but the good thing is like in prior years you know we've gone to udr to supplement this spending but this year because of the surplus we just allowed the operations budget to just take the whole brunt of it so we didn't go to udr at all in 2023 for hazardous tree removal good Okay, those were my only questions. It was mainly the ACC that was over. I think now for you, Lori. So you were talking about this right here, this bad debt expense for the marina. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we've moved out, so now it's just down to this fourteen forty nine. Why would we have anything? That looks it's like it might be one. 
Now, this this 1449 could very well be some unpaid something or other, whether it's there are, yeah, I can explain that one. There are three dry slips that um, are currently occupied by unknown boats. Okay. So I've initiated the lengthy and complex process yeah. to remove Understand. a vessel. Thank you, Joanne. But we build them, so that's why we have bad debt expense. Oh, yes, yes, and then didn't, didn't pay. Yes, yeah. So they get billed the same as everyone else in the earlier part of the year. Well, I'm just saying if they're unknown, who, who do we bill? You're saying? I don't know why it looks that way, but uh, there are that that number is approximately the cost of three dry slips that were not rented but should have been. So it's it's like lost potential, yeah. Income, yeah. Not an actual right. It's even more annoying when you consider how many people are on the waiting list for those slips. So, yeah. I'm, yeah. what I can to get those boats out of there. Yeah. But what but what triggers that bad debt expense or actual accounts, unpaid accounts? That mm -hmm. It's a sl it's like slip number one fifty three and. There's 500 to that, and slip number 154. There's 500 to that. It's not necessarily a name associated with it. I don't know how we don't no, know. No, but well, there 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 will be names that yeah. Accounts. Okay. To to bill some, I mean, you don't record revenue right until you send out a bill to That's someone right. yeah. with an address yeah, and an account. So we'll yeah, take a look so, at that um, outside of this meeting and it and uh, report back the next meeting what that was, so we can move on. It's yeah. pretty insignificant amount, yeah. but we will find out what it is. I'll talk with Joe Animal. Yeah, the amount is immaterial. So. Yes. Immaterial, but such at the top of our mind. <laughs> As an ex-auditor. Three boats that's, looks that's, are material. That's for sure. For any ex-auditor, that's the favorite term. It's, it's immaterial. It's immaterial. <laughs> but but we'll, we'll find it's pretty easy to identify. I'm sure Joey has all the records for those. So. Yeah, I think that basically cover it's like the um the meat of the financial statements unless mm -hmm. anyone has any other questions about it uh, i don't no. think so right. I can, i'll stop sharing this i think we're any um does anyone have any other questions for joel Nope. Okay. You answered them all. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Joel. You taking off? No, I'll hang around. Okay. For all 11 capital requests? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do print all of those. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll move on to new business. I'm going to give Joanne the floor there and uh, go for it, Joanne. Right. The first capital request is for the replacement of a tractor owned by Turf Care. Uh, the Turf Care four tractor loader, asset number 1037, has reached the end of its serviceable lifespan. And although this particular item is not scheduled for replacement until 2026, it should be replaced before the tractor, TN55 New Holland tractor, asset 1064, that is budgeted for replacement on the capital reserve study in 2024. So we're swapping the two tractors around. Turf Care currently has two tractors, the New Holland and the Ford tractor. Uh, the hour meter on the Ford is at 5101 hours compared to 3584 for the New Holland. Uh, this reading alone shows that the amount of wear and tear on the Ford is substantially greater than that on the New Holland, and it is recommended to replace the Ford now. When looking for a replacement equivalent, uh, quotes were generated for three different um, tractors. And when you're out buying large equipment, you've got to get quotes on what they have available unless you want to wait two years. So we got quotes on equivalent models and you can see uh, the minimum requirements that we were looking for and how each of the models stacked up. Um, all three models compared meet the minimum. And so we recommend purchasing the least expensive one, which is the Kubota. So the request is for up to $50,936.70 for the purchase of the Kubota M56605 
whatever, 60 S U H D. I don't know what all that means, but that's the name of it. To be paid from surf. Um, move to approve. Yeah, I don't know anything about tractors, so I I don't know if we need a second. Should we just take that? But um, I will say one thing. Hold on, I'm trying to calculate. Um, I I love that they how this is shown with the three um quotes and um comparisons. One thing I would love to see is in the request, kind of it's spelled out like a word problem, like request up to. Uh, 46,633 plus tax showing that calculated equals up to 50, just. I think it is in the, in the actual request. Uh, the, under the motion, the 5936 is the amount plus tax. Right. What I would like to see is the tax calculated. So we in can, that. yes, the, the number. So we can, because when I calculate the tax, if I assume eight, 0.6%, I come up with a slightly different number than 59.36. It's immaterial. I think it's 8.8, um, 8, isn't it? <clears throat> I don't know. On other requests, I saw 8.6, so I don't know. It depends where they are, because uh, okay. Washington State does have different tax zones, and I don't know where this is coming from geographically. Yeah. It would just be helpful to see that visually. So, you know, when I'm seeing the 59.36, I can... So like if up there, if the Kubota, even you could do it there, 56, 46, 633 plus X dollars tax equals 50. And then those two tie out. Just kind of how Joel was showing. It's like this number here matches this number here. It's just visually um, for anybody that comes back later to look at it. I I would just like to see that. That's all. Okay. And this... I'm, I'm sure the people who are looking to purchase this have already asked themselves this question, but because the um, the Kubota and the New Holland are so close in price, um, the New Holland's is slightly a bit more. Is the maintenance and upkeep of both of them approximately the same? Yes. Okay. And it could be a Toyota versus Tesla thing. So. <laughs> Oh, okay, so um, okay. I will make a motion to move that the Sun Valley Board of Directors. Oh, well, that's the motion. I make a motion to approve that the Finance Committee recommend that the Sun Valley Community Association Board of Directors approve the allocation of fifty thousand nine hundred and thirty-six dollars and seventy cents from SERP for the purchase of a Kubota. M5660 SUHD golf course tractor and authorize the golf course superintendent to work with the finance director on the pur purchase of this item. All those in favor? I can't even see. Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, one down, Joanne, one down. Woo. All right, uh, number two. It's another, so big, it keeps freezing my computer. There you go. It's another turf care request. This is for the replacement of the turf care Cushman Groommaster sand trap rake. Turf care's Cushman Groommaster sand trap rake has reached the end of its serviceable lifespan and is budgeted for replacement on this year's capital reserve study, 2024. Many of the components of this unit have either been replaced or are currently not operational such as there is a broken steering wheel, multiple engine issues, hydraulic rake lift inactive, and the three-wheel drive no longer works. <laughs> um, a sorry analysis, to be sure. Um, the table below summarizes the available equipment that meets our needs. The lower horsepower of the Smithco Sandstar, its unusual design, it actually has no steering wheel. It's like a zero turn mower, you know, with the two levers on either side and its lack of three-wheel drive cause it to fail our review. Of the two models left, the John Deere 1220 utility rake is, the, is less expensive and does meet all of our needs. So the uh, proposal here is to provide funding for the purchase of a John Deere True Finish 1220 utility rake equipped with um, accessories as shown above, not to exceed 32,578.91, and that includes the sales tax. Joanne, just a question. is. 
is the useful life of the of the of the um, piece of equipment proposed, even though it's cheaper, is the useful life about the same as the one that's a little more expensive? I mean, sometimes you get what you pay. Sandstar will get stuck. That's the problem. It only has two wheel drive, um, and it's just it's not. It's not functional. It, it's it's horsepower misses the mark. It has a, it only has ten horsepower. The other models have between fifteen and sixteen, and right. because it doesn't have that three wheel drive, um, so I asked I asked um, Greg, well, well, then why did you get a quote on it if it's so crappy? And he said because we're supposed to get three quotes. <laughs> so. Um, I guess what we're what he's trying to say is there's really only two out there that'll do the job. There is a third one, but it's so terrible that no one buys it, and hence the low yeah. price. Yeah, yeah. Because so I was thinking sometimes you get what you pay for. So I was thinking, is there's if it wasn't that much more, and there was a lot, it was it was it would last longer. But anyway, thank you for answering my question. Sure. Because we have in-house maintenance, Rob, we we generally get a good lifespan out of these things. But we beat them to death too, because you know the more they use it, the better the course conditions are. Perhaps the golfers would prefer that we just fill in the sand traps. We have Stu Don't here. end up in the sand <laughs> trap. <laughs> <laughs> um, any discussion? No, but I don't think we have a motion on the table. So do you want me to read it? Do you have it in front of you to read? I do. Yeah. Okay. I that the finance committee recommends that SVCA board of directors approve the allocation of 32,578 and 91 cents from CRRRF for purchasing a sand trap rake and authorize the golf course superintendent to work with the finance director on the purchase of this item. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Okay, down two. Excellent progress. Uh, capital request number three is for fast response funds. Um, specifically, this is for request of funding for the 2024 fast re response for unforeseen drainage issues project. Sun Valley Community Association's 2024 budget includes $88,400 for fast response for unforeseen drainage issues. This budget item is intended to cover unexpected drainage issues that may occur throughout the year. In 2022, SBCA began restoring SBCA's drainage system to the original 1970s construction design. And last year in 2023, we aggressively continued that restoration. In 2023, SBCA cleared and established positive drainage at all culverts previously known. And we additionally located 99 new culverts that had been buried. Uh, SVCA has also adopted a new 10-year roads and drainage capital plan. With these improvements, the risk of an unexpected infrastructure failure is reduced, but is still present. It is important to maintain this budget item to cover unexpected drainage issues that may arise. Some examples of situations in which fast response budget has been used include the 2021 November flood and the 2023 October rain event. That was memorable. In addition, SBCA anticipates additional culverts will continue to be found as three new culverts have already been located this year. This puts the total of new culverts found in the last year up to 102. Analysis, SBCA has about 40 miles of roads, typically with ditches on both sides and 353 currently identified culverts. This infrastructure network winds through steep, heavily forested terrain, includes a lake, numerous, dra numerous drainage corridors, and two large creeks, Beaver and Austin. Given the scope of this network, it is not uncommon for drainage issues to develop during storm events. This capital request provides immediate financial assistance for Sun Valley to quickly address issues as they arise. Um, unexpected events often require a quick response to reduce damage or limit damage or reestablish access for people who might be cut off. The work is typically completed on a time and materials contract by external contractors if the scope is beyond what our maintenance department can do. A time and materials contract allows SVCA to quickly mobilize a contractor and complete the work. SVCA issued a request for bids for an on-call construction contract and received many responses. And they, those are detailed in some of the backup. 
After reviewing all the responses, we recommend that SPCA issue on-call contracts to the top three competitive bidders, Stremler Gravel, Dirtworks Bellingham, and Tiger Construction. With these contracts in place, the maintenance and facilities manager will be able to contact the contractors by order of bid, obviously lowest to highest, when urgent or emergency situations occur. There are two requests associated with this. First, to authorize $88,400 from Rhodes, the 2024 Fast Response for Unforeseen Drainage Issues project. The funds will be monitored by our maintenance manager who is responsible for the overall project and will be the person who determines when it is necessary to use an external contractor. The second request is to authorize the general manager to execute SVCA standard construction contract with the three recommended contractors per PNW's proposal dated February 6th. And the three contractors again are Stremler Gravel, Dirtworks Bellingham, and Tiger Construction. Any discussion? Questions? Okay, so um, make a motion that the Finance Committee move that the Sudden Valley Community Association Board of Directors approve the allocation of $88,400 from Rhodes for the 2024 Fast Response for Unforeseen Drainage Issues Project and name the Maintenance and Facilities Manager as the individual responsible for management of this project. Those in favor? Okay. Okay. And motion two move that the SBCA Board of Directors, the Finance Committee recommends that the SC, SBCA Board of Directors authorize the GM to execute SBCA's standard construction contract with Stemler Gravel, Dirt Works, Bellingham, and Tiger Construction. All those in favor? Okay. It is unanimous. And for those who are watching, um, but on each of these requests, the finance committee will note that it was approved or not approved and by how much before the motion goes to the board of directors. However, on the motions are written um, as they will be presented to the board of directors. That's why we keep having to insert finance committee in there. Okay, so Joanne, <laughs> number, number four. Ditches, culverts, and swales. Yay. <laughs> like planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah. The purpose of this is to request funding approval for maintenance of ditches, culverts, and swales as per the 2016 Special General Meeting Mandate for 2024. The 2016 SGM required Sudden Valley Community Association to perform major maintenance on ditches, culverts, and swales on an annual basis. A memo from Larson Gross dated December 29th, 2015, outlined the work that could be completed under this program. Since the 2016 SGM, this project has been called the Culvert and Vegetation Control, or CVC. From 2016 to 2021, it appears that most of the work completed under the project was focused on vegetation control. In 2022, SVCA Board of Directors approved the 2022 Road and Drainage Notice of Activity Project that focused on solving known storm drainage issues. Many of these issues had been known for years, but had not been addressed. This project completed work at more than 40 locations throughout SVCA. The scope of work included excavating to restore ditches and swales for, for more than 5,000 lineal feet, culvert cleaning, and numerous culvert replacements. Um, in 2022, SVCA's maintenance department uh, implemented a new approach to maintaining our drainage infrastructure by incorporating preventive maintenance activities along with the focused vegetative control that had been done previously. With this shift, additional work was included as part of the annual operating budget for maintenance. Roadside mowing uh, of all road shoulders, a minimum of twice per year. Proactive trimming of roadside, roadside trees and vegetation by maintenance staff using our bucket truck. Scheduling annual clean green events where chippable material is brought by homeowners to maintenance staff for chipping and disposal. Regularly chipping roadside branches directly into a truck instead of side casting and road cleaning with sweeper trucks that collect the debris instead of side casting material onto the shoulders and into the ditches. And we do that twice a year. In 2023, the budgeted CBC funds for 2022 and 2023 were combined to focus on locating and clearing all of SVCA's culverts. In addition, as culverts were located, positive drainage was provided at each location so water could enter and exit the culverts as originally designed. 
Before the completion of this project, we had 254 culverts. After the project, uh, we added 99, making it 353. In 2023, a contract was awarded to Impact Design to develop an updated road and drainage plan. This new year, new 10 year plan identified the culverts that need to be replaced and provides a schedule for replacing them. For example, the 2024 road budget proposes to replace 52 culverts. In addition, the new 10 year plan also identified the importance of continuing maintenance on ditches and culverts. Uh, the plan specifically calls for the use of CVC funds each year to complete ditching and to keep the culverts clear. In addition, it recommended that any unused funds from prior years should be allocated to the following year's CVC allowance. Basically, they're underscoring the importance of continued maintenance to keep the drainage system functional. Um, analysis. We do have over 40 miles of roads with ditches typically on at least one side of the roadway and many roads having them on both sides. Last year, ditches where drainage issues had been identified were cleaned and restored. Uh, we continue to prioritize locations for ditch improvement based on issues that are known. Areas where water is not flowing as intended, as intended will be prioritized for restoration with the available funds. This is a moving target as each rain event typically identifies more locations where ditching is needed and the maintenance department is maintaining a priority list as issues come to light. Rain events are also leading to the location of additional culverts. Any new culverts discovered will be cleaned and mapped as part of this year's proposed project. In 2024, we've already identified three new ones uh, and two catch basins that were previously unmapped. This project is proposed to be a combined effort between our maintenance department and outside contractors. When a scope of work is identified beyond maintenance's ability, an approved vendor from the 2024 on-call contractor list will be engaged. Typically a vendor would be used where heavy equipment that we don't own is needed or which requires expe specialized experience or when the scope of the work is beyond what we can handle. A few examples of when an outside contractor would be utilized include clearing a long culvert that is beyond the capabilities of our VAC trailer. We can do culverts that are less than 15 feet and that's it. Uh, cleaning large stretches of ditches where larger equipment and full-size dump trucks significantly reduce the cost per foot of ditching or where offsite disposal of materials generated during cleaning operations is required. SVCA's maintenance department will undertake cleaning of smaller culverts and structures that are suited to our VAC trailer, as well as complete isolated drainage improvements not suited for high volume production. It's a lot of shovel work. In addition, SVCA's maintenance department will perform large scale pruning where appropriate to help drainage. Selective large scale pruning is considered pruning that is required no more frequently than every three to five years as defined by Larson Gross's memo from December 29th, 2015. SVCA's expected costs for this work are detailed below. You can see that it totals 65.8. The supervisory budget above is substantial because the supervisor needs to receive and review all of the drainage related requests that are reported. In 2023, the maintenance department received 135 individual service requests related to drainage. That's like one every three days. Um, the supervisor also determines if the needed improvement can be completed by SVCA or requires outsourcing. They've got to go out and look at every single project, measure, and you know, figure out how to do it, and then, then decide. And they also plan the projects that will be performed by SVCA staff, as well as coordinating when outside contractors are brought in. So a lot of the work is, is coordination and tracking of these things. Our proposal is that um, SVCA authorized $125,320 for the 2024 CVC project as identified already in the roads budget. The maintenance and facilities manager will be responsible for project oversight and management of the funds. Funding breakdown is proposed to be 65-8 uh, towards SVCA's maintenance department and 59-520 for outside contractors utilizing the 2024 on-call contractor list. Any discussion? Comments, questions? Yeah, I've got a question. So if these hours are charged to roads, would we see a reduction in um, payroll charge to uh, operations compared to budget in the maintenance department? It's already taken into account in the budget. Okay, so you budgeted for? A certain proportion of maintenance's hours to be covered by roads. What portion? Joel? Put you on the spot, Joel. 
16.4 percent. Did you I just see. make that up right I, now? I'd have to look to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I remember years ago, Bruce brought like a whole entire thing that like divvied it all out between, you know, how many hours operations and, and roads and whatnot. Um, okay. So 123,000. Uh, it, it comes out, to, I do remember it comes out to about two FTEs. Like I can look it up actually pretty easily. So... Huh. So when we look at the FTE report, is that what's budgeted to, which we haven't seen for a couple of years, but is that what's budgeted to operations or that's bodies, people? So FTEs means one, yeah, one full-time equivalent. Yes, it sounds like it. Right. But, yeah. but yeah. to operations or total to the um, yeah. association? So, like, if we have five maintenance FTEs, do we really have seven? No. Yeah, that would be total hours. So, meaning we could have more. I'd have to look at the schedule to see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to see that FTE report just as an aside. <clears throat> That's what I get for saying FTEs. I, should have... I know what FTE is. I'm just curious, like, what what hours are we using to calculate that that number is it just operations hours or is it total or or are we using it to be full-time employee which usually it's full-time equivalent but anyway you no know, just asking Let's see here i can tell you are there any questions about the actual cvc proposal that was a question about the cvc proposal I, I just have a quick uh, question, Joanne. Uh, it's just more informational, more more than anything. But uh, are you still getting a, a, a large number of complaints about additional flooding problems caused by the culverts being cleaned? Um, well, as we as I said, yeah. Every time it rains, somebody calls us yeah. to say, "Wow, water's moving this way. Water's moving that way." Um, Sorry, I, okay. But not all of it is related to our cleaning the culvert. Some of it's related to new construction. Um, you know, people landscape, they put down impermeable surfaces without permission. Like there's a lot of a lot of actors taking actions here in, in the valley. Yeah, no, I, I just find it interesting, uh, you know, wondering uh, at what point in time it, it's actually going to all be mitigated or maybe it never will be, but it would be nice if it we actually got on top of it at some point in time. Well, just as an example, water for years sheeted over the top of Sudden Valley Drive, causing icing at um, particular locations that were well known. And that no longer happens. Oh, great. So there have been appreciable improvements. Cool. Still gate five runs down the road. You can see it. <laughs> you can see where like the gravel and stuff at the bottom of the turn comes out, bottom of Loganberry, same thing. I know they've done tons of work on the culverts, but it's not quite making it into it. It just comes down the road. Yeah. Oh, we have the same problem over in Longshore, but it's because of the the uh, new old construction that they've been working on for, what, five years, Joanne? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes the rain just comes down so fast and so hard, it doesn't matter. It's just going to make its way down the middle of the street. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Joel was talking to me. Uh, was there a question for me? I'm no, sorry. no, we're just waiting for... Um, are we ready for the motion? Yeah, these are just really long. Hold on. You want me to read it? Um, you can't, sure. Okay, move that the finance committee recommend that the board of directors approve the allocation of one twenty five three hundred and twenty dollars from roads for the twenty twenty four ditches, culverts, and swales CVC project with the funds to be administered by the maintenance and facilities manager. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Joanne, this is a lot less painful than we thought it was going to be. Oh, how's wait. Your, how's your, a strategic order. <laughs> how's your voice hand, hanging out there? Okay. All right. So the next one is for on-call engineering. 
Um, this request will provide funding for on-call engineering services to address emergency issues related to roadway and drainage infrastructure. The requested funds will allow SVA to respond quickly to unanticipated damage or issues that arise outside of planned capital improvements. Services provided from these funds may include, but are not limited to technical evaluations, preliminary engineering and permitting support for unplanned projects. Based on the age of our infrastructure, we expect that emergency issues will occur. Uh, so we ask that you authorize $41,600 as identified in the 2024 capital budget for roads for on-call engineering services in 2024. Funds will be administered by the maintenance and facilities manager. In addition, authorize the unspent 2023 on-call engineering balance, SVCA capital code 9923, um, to be carried forward to the 2024 project. The remaining balance is 883 right now. Um, but that may have disappeared already. So um, I'm not sure. We, we will we will check that number before next week's meeting. Wait, I don't see that in the motion. Is that or just ad lib in there? Oh, no, I think actually, I'm sorry. I'm I'm working from my old copy, and I think we okay. took that out because it was so up in the air. Because yeah, okay. we had two motions originally. So just the one, which is asking for the 416 from 2024 budget to be made available. Okay. So, and just for clarity, that other one that, that we just covered, you know, that's for actual contractor work and maintenance work on things. This is for the people who we might have to call in to get a permit or to tell us how to fix something. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. What What is the difference? But okay. Yeah, that's the difference. Like we recently called a geologist uh, mm -hmm. because there was um, a rock fall on Southern Court. And it was determined uh, that no. that was not a problem, that it was just an isolated incident due to the thaw, the freeze thaw cycle, you know, because we had that cold weather and then it thawed and then there was cold again anyway. Um, but we need to have money available so that we can bring in experts as things occur to keep on top of, pro of problems. So th that's a really good example of how these funds are used. And you can see it's a much smaller number than we requested for the other work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and Joanne, when we bring in an engineer um, for this work, is the engineer contracted directly with Sudden Valley? It depends on the amount. Um, usually we do uh, pay them. If it's small and it needs to happen fast, sometimes PNW Services does it, but nothing if it's significant, like over 10 grand. That's kind of our, our, our uh, rule of thumb for this year. In the past, it may have worked differently, but... I've spoken with Tyler and negotiated that, like I said, as a rule of thumb. You know, in certain situations, we just have to move fast, but we prefer obviously to pay people directly. It it gives us um, better records and it also uh, eliminates the pass through fee. Okay, yeah, so so we're we're limiting the pass through fee to one thousand dollars per contract. If it if we're limiting it to ten percent, correct? I mean. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't want to. We don't want to waste money. We'd rather just pay the vendors directly. Yeah, that's because forty-one thousand in the grand scheme of things is not a whole lot of money. So, ten percent of that would be quite a chunk out of that. Okay. So, um, we move. I'll make a motion that the finance committee move that the they the finance committee moves that they recommend to the board of directors to approve the allocation of 41,600 from SVCA's 2024 capital budget for roads for on-call engineering services in 2024 with funds to be administered by the maintenance and facilities manager. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. I'm Okay, um, moving on. Um, 2024 potholes and minor road repairs. The Sudden Valley Community Association 2024 roads budget includes a line item totaling $36,400 for pothole repairs. The intended work to be covered by this line item includes minor road repairs in addition to just plain old potholes. As potholes are identified, our maintenance department fills them temporarily with cold patch until a few potholes are identified. Once this occurs, permanent asphalt repairs are completed. This includes removal of the failed asphalt, subgrade preparation is needed, placement of the new asphalt, and finally sealing the edges of the repair. 
In addition, our maintenance department will also perform minor road repairs as part of the scope. Minor road repairs are projects that don't require contractor expertise, specialized equipment, permitting, or are large scale projects. So this is small stuff. Minor road repairs include activities such as repairing a washed out shoulder. This could include aggregate placement to stabilize or repairing ruts off the edge of asphalt. Uh, painting stop bars at intersections, painting parking lots, replacement of broken street signs and posts, stabilizing a ditch that has drainage issues, installation of an asphalt berm for directing water flow, and more projects of a similar scope. The proposed 2024 budget for this repair for these repairs are $3,000 for asphalt, asphalt materials, $1,000 for the disposal of asphalt and aggregates that are removed, $4,180 for materials, which could include aggregates, erosion control materials, storm drainage, signs or signposts, et cetera. $3,500 for fuel and equipment, $11,920 for the supervisor hours, and $12,800 for maintenance staff hours, coming up to a total estimate of $36,400. Um, and so the proposal is that uh, we authorize $36,400 from the roads budget for SVCA's maintenance department to complete pothole and minor road repairs in 2024. Any discussion? So just again, so about a third of the maintenance supervisor's time is on capital projects and it's budgeted as such. So 200 hours from this one, 500 from the previous, 700 hours out of 2080 a year. Yes. Okay. And that's already included in the 2024 budget. Yes. Okay. Sorry about Mike, Karen. Yeah, yeah. That about a third of his salary is actually covered by capital. About sixteen percent. Well, seven hundred hours out of twenty. There's more than one supervisor, though. It's not just. Oh, one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they're about in terms of the capital budget mm -hmm. maintenance. It's about two FTEs, two point zero eight FTEs. Yeah, but I was just talking about supervisor hours. I didn't realize yeah, there was more than just Mike. Right. So, so the thing about it is the supervisor hours are a lot more expensive. And we do, as I said, have two supervisors. So um, and that the, the rate that's given is um, average an average. Yeah. So between the two, it's about half an FTE for those two supervisors, Mike and Matt. Okay. Okay. So motion that if there's no more discussion may i move that the finance committee recommend to the board of directors to approve the allocation of 36,400 from the 2024 capital budget for roads for potholes and minor road repairs in 2024 all those in favor okay it's unanimous thank you um okay we're now going to shift away from roads for a minute Instead, we're going to talk about HVAC. The purpose of this memo is to request funding for the replacement of the 20-ton HVAC unit located in the clubhouse. SVCA's 2024 budget includes $83,200 for replacing this unit. As per PNW summary dated February 3rd, 2024, the unit has been evaluated to be at the end of its life cycle. Funding is requested in the amount of $22,176 for design and permitting as per PNW summary. Access for installation of a new unit is a major factor in this project and could possibly require the temporary removal of do doors and or walls to bring in the new equipment. In addition, an economizer, and a description of that is attached, has to be added to meet current code requirements. These two requirements create the majority of the work that is needed to design a replacement for the current system. We propose to replace this unit in kind since altering, since altering the overall HVAC system in the clubhouse would require bringing the existing building up to current energy code. 
A thorough evaluation of this has not been completed, but it's estimated that it would be a very large, large project considering that the clubhouse was built in the early 1970s. An energy code upgrade would likely include items such as new building insulation, window replacement, new HVAC components, et cetera. After the design is complete and permits submitted, an engineer's estimate will be prepared. The project would then be brought back to the board for funding approval. Following approval, the project would be issued for bid and then brought back to the board of directors for contract award. So at this time, we're asking that um, SBCA authorize $22,176 from SURF per PNW summary dated February 3rd, 2024 for design and permitting for the clubhouse HVAC 2010 unit replacement project. I have a question. Oh. Go ahead and ask if there was any, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, I was just gonna ask what is this? Oh, no, I see it, Never mind. 83,000 is in the budget for 2024. And so we're just asking for 20 something thousand, 22,000 right now to design it because it's going to be a complex thing that, that requires possibly wool removal. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Okay. Do we have a feeling for how much it's actually going to cost? No, that's why we're doing it. No, I know, but sometimes they kind of give you like a, hey, this is going to be way more than that. Or almost know. every proposal that we've uh, put out to bid has come in at more than estimated. So yeah, I think it's it's uh, a safe bet to imagine that this will cost more than eighty three thousand. But one of the reasons that we iterate yeah. in here um, that it's brought to the board three times for approval is there's three times that it gets reviewed. It needs to be done. There's no question about that. That unit is going to die. In mm -hmm. fact, um, it was repaired a, a year and a half ago, um, and it, it was almost at its la last legs at that point, and it's just been running since then. So it's beyond the time when it needs to get replaced, and we can't rush into this project. This is not like pop out the water heater and pop in a new one. This thing is massive. It's the size of a room, um, and uh, we have to plan out how we're going to do it uh, in order to do it most cost efficiently. And so we're asking for the 22,000 to do that right now. Joanne, um, do we anticipate that this project is gonna require uh, the restaurant to close down for a bit? No, the unit is located in the, um, the lower level uh, behind the space that used to be occupied by accounting. So it will not disrupt any uh, restaurant activities. Okay, thank you. In the pictures, you can see all the accounting files in the background. It's in the file room. Any more discussion or questions? Okay, um, so I'll make the motion to move that the Finance Committee recommend that the SBCA Board of Directors approve the allocation of $22,176 from SURF for design and permitting per PNW summary dated February 3rd, 2024 for the Clubhouse HVAC 2010 unit replacement project. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Joanne, you should have put this on last. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, so tennis courts. And pickleball. So as I say tennis court, understand that um, the people designing this out assured us that one or more of the courts would be convertible to pickleball. Um, and so the purpose of this memo is to request funding approval for the core area tennis court resurfacing and fencing project. On February 9th of last year, Sudden Valley Community Association's Board of Directors approved design and permitting under Capital Code 9723.05 for improving the existing tennis courts located next to the main pool at Barn 8. Design and permitting was completed and the project was issued for bid in July of last year. However, the bids exceeded the budgeted amount and contractors were not available to complete the project in 2023. So SVCA elected to reject the bids and rebid it in this year, 2024. Per PNW summary dated February 9th, 2024, 
The project was issued for bid a second time and Stremler Gravel Incorporated is the lowest bidder with a reconstruction bid of, or with a construction bid of 283-338. PNW summary includes the initial capital requests and bid packages for reference. SBCA's 2024 budget includes $191,278 for this project. The initial capital request for design and permitting used $19,101.50, leaving a balance of $172,176.50 available from the 2024 budget. The construction budget of $295,615.38, as per PNW's attached summary, means that the project will come in over the initial reserve study budget by $123,438.88. However, since this project has been put out for bid a second time, it appears that the market price for completing repairs to the tennis courts was unfortunately much higher than anticipated. It is doubtful that going to bid for a third time would lead to better results. In fact, between the first and second bids, the costs went up. <laughs> After design was completed, it was noted that the southeast corner of the tennis court floods during heavy rain events. After investigation, it was determined that water comes down the east slope adjacent to the courts from pipe drains related to the building structures above. To mitigate this, we are proposing to install an infiltration trench for approximately 150 feet along the edge of the asphalt to capture excess surface water and prevent it from flooding the courts. In addition, the two known drain pipes will be piped down the slope and connected to the infiltration trench. This will properly convey stormwater from above the courts and prevent further erosion. This scope of work is anticipated to be added to Stremler Gravel's contract as a change order. This repair will model the infiltration trench that was installed along the north wall of Barnate in 2021, and that has worked so well to prevent annual flooding. For this project to move forward, we are requesting a change order funding in the amount of $302,615.38. $295,615.38 as per PNW summary for construction and $7,000 um, to install an infiltration trench to prevent water from flooding the court. So uh, the proposal is to authorize the 302,615.38 from SURF as change order funding for construction to capital code 9723.05 and to authorize the general manager to execute SVCA standard construction contract with Stremler Gravel for completing the proposed repairs to the court. Questions, comments? This is a, a, a biggie. Um, I'm just trying to work through the math. This is actually the third bid, Joanne, just so you know, we got bids for it back in 2019 or 2020, 2019, I think, do you remember Rob? Yeah, it was in that time. It was about 2019. Both tennis courts around this amount. Yeah. For for half of it, you know. Um, and this is this is for only the tennis courts at the barn. It does not include the tennis court down oh, by the marina. Yeah, I am aware. Okay. So 283 is the direct quote from is it Stremler? Sorry, I'm just working out my numbers. Um, okay. And then 3000 from impact design for support. I'm going to call that the 9,000 PNW fee. So that gets us to the 295 and then an additional seven for the trench. Correct. Gets us to the 302 plus the 19 we already spent on design makes this total project so we're doing the you're asking for the change order of 302 but the total project is going to be 321 yeah okay so question i have stremler gravel is this when i hear stremler gravel i think of gravel or is 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 tennis court something else that they do yes. I mean, yeah it is yeah. and have we have we talked to any of their previous clients? Were they happy with the with the 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 repairs or the the new construction that they got? Um, I'm certain that Tyler is aware of their capabilities in this area, or he wouldn't have bid to them. I mean, I I can connect you with him if you want, but no, oh, no, I'm just asking the question. It just seems like, yeah, I, I just I I, I was. I'm, when I hear Stremler gravel, I guess I'm thinking 
bit large parking lots or something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm sure these I hear companies you, are big. I'm really? sure these companies are big and they do a lot of different things. So let's Google it. <laughs> Um, so right now, I know we'll, we're going to be doing a tour of all the facilities soon, and I'm sure the tennis course will be included in this. Um, so the condition of them right now, I, uh, I know some are saying, and I, I just don't remember if they're referencing the ones down near the marina or the ones near the barn, that there's quite a bit of tripping hazards and things such as that, if we do not repair these, are they going to be, are we going to have to make them unusable? Um, there's cracks in the asphalt for certain and the surfacing um, and the nets and the poles need to be replaced, but it's there's not significant hazards. Like the, it's actually, I mean, walking across the parking lot, it's way uh -huh. worse. Is the one down at the marina in worse condition? No, they're both terrible. Both terrible. I mean, they're both really not playable. Of course, people play anyway, and the balls just go every which way, but um, they really need to be done. And they uh, obviously, as we heard from Karen and Rob, they've needed to be done for a while. Yeah, they have been on the A1 rating capital, actually both. Both were on there for 2020 COVID, and then, you know, the bid came in. It was too high, rejected it. Staff were going to try to do something to just get us by for a little bit. Um, and then, you know, just lots of things change. So, so yeah, they have both been on the priority list since at least 2020 and possibly before that. So um, do you recall off the top of your head, Joanne, I can look this up if not, when do we have the Marina one slated to be redone? If I recall, it's pretty far out. You're asking when we have the, the marina one down? Yeah, yeah like what what year do we have it slated? From what I recall, it got moved out pretty far. Yeah, it is pretty far. Hold on. Okay. This happened to have the capital budgets right here. Perfect. Uh wow. Like 10 years, huh? Is what I remember. It's beyond the 10 years. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll revisit that at budget time. Um, okay. I am not getting anything super detailed on the Strumler Gravel website, Rob. I'm sorry. And this, this, the this tennis is court is, is an asphalt structure with an acrylic overlayment. So, yeah. And they do concrete, is what they do. So, yeah. yeah. And this and is for three courts. Correct. Three I side. think so. Yeah. That's how, yeah. That's how many are there. Three side by side. Side by side. Um, and if I recall from back when we had it evaluated long ago, two thousand nineteen or two thousand twenty, part of the issue was the I don't I'm going to say the wrong thing, but like the underlay, like the the concrete structure that the tennis court actually sits on, because that is like you're right by the creek and I think there was a culvert that went under there for a while before they did the open opened up the stream that like that used to be closed and it failed and anyway so that's part of the settling and whatnot and then when someone reviewed it it was actually a tennis court company that's what they did um they came in and they're like yeah the the basically the foundation is needs to be built up so you know I can see where a concrete company for this would be the way to go because Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I am, I will first say I am not a tennis player, never have been other than, and nor am I a pickleball player. Um, so we total in total have three at the barn, we'll call it the recreation corridor. And then we have one down at the marina. Is that correct? No, the marina is, is it two courts plus a basketball court and pickleball? It's two. It's two, two courts. Two tennis courts side by side so, in a and, small pickleball court and a basketball. And right. if we if we choose, if we vote, if we approve to do um a pavilion, will there be any type of indoor court in that? It hasn't been designed, so it could, could. continue. 
basketball, uh, pickleball, whatever we want. It, the the footprint would allow for that for sure. I'm just I'm just throwing I'm throwing out ideas, questions. Maybe somebody will feed off of it. Um, just off the top of my head, I'm wondering if we shouldn't wait until we have our total recreation corridor um laid out with the a pavilion what we can do it with the barn and everything in there to come up and maybe we can kind of um maybe combine these funds to make an indoor court i don't know how often um not having kids i'm not down in that area a lot i don't know how often they're used if there's often all three courts are filled and they're used year round, or if it's usually just one use at a time, and and we could do with one. I don't know any of that, and I certainly don't want to take courts away from members. But I, if only ones being used, having an indoor that's in really good condition and can always be used might be better than having five courts that only one of them are used and it's not in great condition and it's outdoor. I'm just throwing out ideas. I'm wondering so, if we shouldn't just. Well, my kind of hold off on this um i kind of i kind of disagree on that um one is that pickleball is huge mm -hmm. uh, and i think um if we had a safe playable surface that is playable uh you would see a lot you'd see people down there playing uh, obviously not like to probably tonight or today <laughs> Um, I don't know, Rob. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, really. I saw a guy paddle boarding on the lake. Is today. pickleboard an outdoor? Do you have to play it indoor? Yep, it's outdoor. Okay. It's outdoor. I'm sorry. Um, I've just seen pickleball yeah. courts around town, and they're all indoor. So it could be either, but yeah, it's outdoor. I, yeah. I talked to a lot. I've talked to a, a a number of people in you know in the neighborhoods that uh, are really hoping that uh, the tennis courts could become safe and playable again. I know there was actually a like a tennis club that there was brought together. Um, I, when we had a parks trail and recreation committee, um, we got a lot of communication from them. Um, people were really hopeful when we got the bid in 2019, but it was huge. Um, so I understand what you're saying, Lori, but I think, uh, oh, I, I said, is, I can be completely, totally off base. I was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out there cause I do not, um, it's a lot of money. I don't, but, uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience yeah. with tennis and. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you're I, curious, I thought pickleball was all indoor. No, it, it, it's both. It's just like tennis. You can play tennis indoor. You can play tennis. But, but it's a dry. But it's dry. You don't play in the rain. Mm -hmm. You could. Oh, well, I've seen people Here's playing like, in I'll the play rain. Any time. It depends on it depends on the people. Okay. Um, but if you're curious of what it would look like, if you just go over to Cromwell Park, they have. Um, all sorts of pickleball courts and they have several tennis courts that are convertible into pickleball courts. So it probably looks something similar to that when they get done okay, with it. And, and then you can it. use it. You can use it for both. And, and just for reference, if you're just going over there to do a pickup game of pickleball, just about any day of the week, you have to wait for quite a while. <laughs> over at Cornwall. Yeah. Over at Cornwall. It's played with what looks like a wiffle ball, Lori, but it's really hard. And the okay. surface. I've is never kind of a, even seen a pickleball. Oh, it's game cool. Game. It's it's uh, I, I if I was able body, I'd and I'm old, man. I'd get out there because it's. <laughs> it's you know. I need to pickleball educate myself, I guess. And, I, the, these, and these courts would all be pickleball pickleball convertible. They would just have to. They just be the double line. That was the idea. I, I want to put something out there, though, for the for the committee to consider. This is one hundred and eleven thousand dollars and change more than was budgeted, and and there was just a long and serious discussion held at the board meeting um, last week about funding for the marina wet slip docks this year. You know, we had said in the budget we would put aside one hundred and five thousand for that, and that was a long discussion, right? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about 111,000 for these courts. The other thing that has come up continuously is that pickleball is really loud. And a lot of places where they put pickleball courts in, they start, as soon as they start um, being used and, and people are enjoying the sport, all of the people around the pickleball courts 
hate it because it's really, really loud. And I think, Stu, it might have been you or Brian or both you and Brian last year brought that up when we started talking about this originally. Um, I'm not sure if it was you or someone else, but um, the I, I think there are a lot of things to think about with this project. And, and as Lori mentioned, if we do the pavilion and if there are courts in there that are covered, maybe this money shouldn't be used in the rec court or maybe it should be used in the marina for those tennis courts this year. Um, so everyone could go down and enjoy courts that are playable in the marina. And then when we add the pavilion, we could add courts in the rec corridor. Based on the different topography of the two sites, we feel that the noise from pickleball would be less of an issue in the marina because a lot of it would dissipate out over the lake as opposed to having a lot of it just funnel right up to the residences. And it's more densely populated with the condos right around the rec corridor as well. So more people would be impacted by the noise. So I think the community has waited a long time to have good tennis courts and we do need to move forward with some project this year. But I think that being a little thoughtful about it might might serve us well. So, so there's a lot to consider there. I'm sorry to, to lay it no, off. Kind of what good. you're saying, Joanne, is right project, wrong location. I, I think that may be so. Um, any change though to what's proposed is significant, um, you know, because it was thoughtfully planned to do the rec corridor. And adhering to the plan is a good thing. But even if we adhere to the plan, it's an extra $111,000. So we're going to have to look somewhere else to get that money back. It's not like we have unlimited funds, right? Um, and, you know, you guys uh, hopefully uh, sat in on or listened to after the fact the presentation by Impact Design on our 10 year roads and drainage plan. And Mm -hmm. We need to consistently spend uh, a eight hundred to a million eight hundred thousand to a million dollars every year on roads, right? And these other our other assets need continued investment as well. So to put and not not I'm not arguing about the money that has already been budgeted for the tennis courts, but an additional one hundred eleven thousand feels like a big bill to me. So, so just because of the location, um. So this is this is just what. I, okay, I think I understand this now. Uh, looking at the bid, when we had dog park, we're talking about the small dog park, correct? And dog yeah, park. That's right. And and there's about uh, thirteen thousand or so dollars for um, taking the wire fence and making it uh, an actual approved fence, um, you know, and and fixing the gate there for that little dog park. So that could come out, but it's still a hundred thousand even yeah. with. You know. so I, I I just couldn't figure out what I was just thinking dog park and I was just thinking the, the dog park at the marina um until I remembered the small dog park. Obviously I, I don't let my dog out, but <laughs> but um so do you think because of the logistics of where it's at and the the proximity to the creek and everything like <clears throat> that, if we had a bid on the location down at the marina, do you think that amount would change significantly? I don't. Um, and yeah. we'd have to get a different permit, I think. I'm not positive about that, but I think that we would. So it's, you know, making a change at this time isn't the best idea either, but because of that, ex because it's over budget and not as expected, and because we may have to limit how many courts we can have in playable condition, you know, just understanding the total constraints of our budget, I think, it it requires more conversation and thoughtfulness um, and that we actually step aside and, and consider where we would get that extra 111,000 instead of just approving it without understanding what we would be giving up elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I, hate, I hate for anyone who ut utilizes a facility in the Valley to have that facility they utilize in for repair, but also we have the understand that there's not some magical tree that we can go and pull some money off of. Um, Joanne would remind us, is this tennis court in the rec quarter, is that fairly close to the, to the pool as well? The yeah. main pool? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, um, 
I mean, there is grass in between. There's a grassy area, and then there's that little dog part, which is like a sliver yeah. right alongside the tennis courts. Yeah. Um, in fact, one, one side of the fence around the dog part is the fence around the tennis court. That's why they put it there, I'm sure, because it was oh, okay. you know, cost-effective to do so. But yeah, there's a little grassy area in between. Yeah, that, okay. Joanne, do you, sorry, I'm sorry, Rob, were you done? No, no, I was, it was saying, yeah, okay, I think I have a better sense of, of that. The, I guess that if there's noise too, that would be bothersome if people are trying to lay in the pool and enjoy time with family. Well, it's, it's, it is an issue that's been brought up and has never really been uh, adequately addressed, except for people saying, you know, well, yeah, when you play, Play the game it makes noise right i mean <laughs> we don't have lights there which is in a way a blessing because it means that the noise can't go on and on <laughs> but we do have lots of sun into the late evening here in the northwest so it will be probably you know you could be you could be playing out there till nine o'clock in august right it's the morning that it's a problem that's oh, yeah. when i've heard people complain because mm -hmm. people go out early to work out or whatever and it's like before it's hot um, do you know why the rec corridor was chosen originally to be the first site to repair? I think the intent was to focus on the core rec corridor and bring that back, um, you know, to focus our, our repair and maintenance efforts in a single location to see an imp in appreciable improvement instead of, um, you know, selectively improving amenities throughout. And I, I, there's a lot of of soundness to that. You know, that's that's a pretty good reason. We've done the core. Um, we've done the uh, playground down there. The siding project will come up soon um, in front of the board to reside barn eight, and to to have the tennis courts also looking brand new. You know, that would be impressive, right? It would look like we're making a difference. Um, so this is a tough. This is really a tough one. If it were a smaller amount over the budgeted funding, it will be easier to say yes. But like I said, we just spent a long time as a board. Um, they, you know, they spent a long time talking about the importance of um, putting that money aside and being sure that it was there for the replacement of a, a major asset to the community. Mm -hmm. And that was less, this year's contribution is less than what we're asking for in additional funding. So I think it just- No, it's required. not, it's 105. Same amount. Well, no, it's X 111. If, oh, if this you take out, yeah, that was 105. This is 111 extra. Oh, yeah, so I guess what I'm trying to wrap my brain around is we just put before the community, hey, do you want to build this new building? Right after we bought a new building, you know, do you want to build the ice barn thing? It's not a surprise to us that bids come in higher than what's budgeted. That happens with almost everyone. I think you said that earlier in the meeting. And so I appreciate that we are being conscientious about, hey, what are we actually spending money on when we're going over budget? But why did we put brand new things out for the taking, knowing that most of our bids come in above what we have in our capital budget and make it sound like, hey, yeah, we can just do this if the community votes for it and they don't want a special assessment. We can make that happen knowing that we haven't in accounted for inflation in our contribution in five years and almost everything comes in higher. And we don't even have all of the Welcome Center accounted for in our reserve study. We have, I think, two components, the HVAC and paint. And it, it's a it's a great question, Karen, but you know, that's not something that Joanne is actually really in control of. Uh, that's that's a board finance committee, uh treasurer. Uh, yeah, I get it. But committee it's, it's, decision. But yeah, I, it's a very important thing, but that's not I, something like, that why why was it budgeted for the amount that it was budgeted for in 2024 when we had previous bids, which were over the amount that we actually budgeted for. That's well, a fair really point. Did, That's it. Yeah, we That's really it. did think that those budgets were inflated because they didn't have time to do it. Um, but, but we have budget, we have bids on the record from 2020. And, huh. the, and 
I mean, that was a huge deal. People were so mad about that. So when you have two bids coming in around that amount, at some point you start to think like, hey, that actually might be the number. I mean, that one was actually lower than what we had in the year uh, prior, but that was a tennis court company and they were they were going to do both at the same time. And anyway, um, so, does anyone know about just <laughs> I'm going to go revenue on y'all. Um, are the, the tennis courts primarily used by residents of Sun Valley? It's probably not tracked at all, but you know, since I I can't imagine anybody would drive to Sun Valley to play like tennis. Okay. Not on these courts. Yeah. Okay, and, so and just if they, were, uh, if they were you said that there's a wait for Cornwall Park. If we had these pristine courts, and I'm assuming that the that that everything here is for a you know, for a community tennis court, not a grand slam quality oh. tennis court. Um, we used to have we used to have log. I don't know if we still do, but you had to have you had to pay for and have access to the amenities. Um, you can still see the card reader on the fence. I mean, it <laughs> Joanne's going to probably kill me here. Um, but I mean, if it would attract from outside the community, I I mean, I'm not a real a big supporter of building something for to attract from outside the community. Um, and I would never want to charge our community members for using the courts. However, having an access key to use the courts, I don't disagree with it would keep it would help. I don't know if we have vandalism or kids hanging out in the courts or whatever. I don't disagree to having a card to grant access to the courts. I don't want people to have to pay for that card to grant access. Unless they were coming in and we had court reservations, we had an online reservation system with the rec department and you could make reservations if you lived in Bellingham and that there would be a fee to use it. Um, I don't know why you couldn't just use the, the rec card that we have yeah. now, just like you used to, back in the day, you used to pay for it. Now we pay for it through our dues. I, I can still, yeah. they're not activated, but I can still see the card readers on the fences. Yeah. The Marina one yeah. is cut open. That fence is cut open. So that's not going to do you any good, but. Um, it sounds, um, sounds like a yeah. change order, but point you of order. The Marina be, fence is cut open. Oh, you mean on the court? On the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, so just a quick question for Joanne, but can't non-residents get a, uh, access card or pay an extra fee to use the gym facilities and everything, Joanne? Uh-huh. Yes, they pay um, a, a fee to get a card. Uh, and yes, we could uh, install new card readers at the tennis courts once they're fixed and, and the fence is secure and all. Um, we could certainly do those things um, if we wanted to control access. There isn't currently a problem um, with people on the tennis courts. Um, but if they're fixed up, we don't want kids skateboarding and stuff because that could rip up the surface, I guess. Yeah, I mean, things no like that are concerned. There's yeah. no basketball in those courts, correct? correct. Marina has a basketball court. Marina does have a Yeah, I knew that. Um, so just a quick ob observation. Can I speak, Lori? Oh, um, sorry, yes, too. A, a quick observation. So... We used to, Gene and I used to live at the clubhouse condos, which are right next to those tennis courts. And now we live over at uh, Longshore, which is up the street from the tennis courts in the marina. So pickleball does echo around, but no worse than the basketball does. And certainly not worse than the people hitting tennis balls against the backboard in the rec corridor tennis courts. So... I'm not quite sure the noisy pickleball thing is, is really, it, it is noisy, not as noisy as basketball, not as noisy as somebody hitting tennis balls against the backboard that it's what it's designed for. Um, and you know, the, the community, I know a lot of people that aren't playing tennis now that would like to play tennis, but they're not playing tennis because the courts aren't fixed. Okay. So, so, I just want to understand. You're saying you think you think you waited long enough, and it's time to just do it. 
I, I think they've waited long enough and it's time to get it done. And there is actually, from my observation, um, there is no appreciable difference between the number of people that are playing tennis in the, the barn and the recreation corridor and the with the, the marina. They're they're both equally busy. Okay. Well that's I, we have no data whatsoever. You know, we yeah. have yeah, we have no yeah, we have no way of checking it either, do we, Joanne? <laughs> no, but I mean your observation is better than zero, right? You look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe slightly. But I'm grasping it, grasping at straws here. Is Joel still here with us? Um we had and I think I just missed it or dozing. I'm sorry. No, um we had extra funds left from the assess special assessment, the rec special assessment, didn't we? About a hundred thousand from my back of the napkin calculations over the five years. Could we use those to help make up the deficit? We still had the cash, technically. I mean, it'd have to be a designation, but yeah, that's a good to actually account for those. And the board could review that as an option of how to designate those. There's a bylaw that I can't remember it that governs how excess special assessment funds are to be. Yeah, it's, it's, used. I think it's, isn't it? returned or distributed or um we returned have, or used as a credit i guess technically you could say funding this rather than uh, assessing yeah, yeah. more to pay for the extra hundred thousand my take on all of it is whereas i kind of think the idea of like hey let's put it at the marina and then focus on the overall um layout of the rec quarter it's a good idea that probably should have been introduced three years ago. Yeah, I, I, kind I, of, I think of, I'm sorry, Karen. No, I just think that A, people have waited long enough and I just can't wrap my brain around putting this off more to pay for something that was just dreamed up last year. And I want, I want a covered pavilion super bad. I've wanted it for a long time. I would love to see that. I voted for it. I support it. But I just can't conscientiously say like, hey, yeah, tennis courts, we're going to have to wait another year, knowing that people have been waiting since at least 2019 or 2020 when it was high on the list of things to do and to put it off another year because, hey, last year we just halfway through thought of this idea that we're going to build this open air pavilion, which is a great idea. I love it, but it shouldn't take priority over things that have been on the list for years and years and years so what if um we when we the, switching to a different project looking at the barn siding if we find things in the barn which for some reason and not saying this has happened but that the barn is going to need some major structural repairs is not safe and we're going to kind of have to do something to address that issue. Would the location for the um, tennis courts, would, would if that happened, would then the marina be a better location for the tennis courts than up near the recreation corridor right now? Should, I mean, just wondering, yes, it needs to be done. Should we, wait until we know a little bit more about how the recreation corridor is going to turn out. Just do. So it, there's long discussion at the last board meeting about this and the siding on the barn. The reason that they're, they're sectioning that down or segmenting it out is they're going to see if there's problems with the structure of the barn um, prior to tearing the siding off. If there is problems with the structure of the barn, the proposal was to actually focus building the pavilion Mm -hmm. before they did anything to the barn. So that's all has to be discussed at, at a later point. But, um, you know, the, the proposal, what it does is it shifts the barn eight repair to a later date and we build the pavilion. Was that correct, Joanne? Did I summarize yeah. it quickly? Well, there's there's a lot more to be considered and and 
this is very complicated, but yes, I think that that was one of the things that was discussed. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the original plan for Barn 8 did include in its first phase exploratory work to determine what the, uh, the substructure looked like. And that first phase would determine what total investment was needed to move forward with um, with the residing project. And a portion of funding was in that budget for the replacement of substructure. My, my suggestion has been to sort of just separate those things so that we did the investigation without mobilizing the contractor for that larger project because mobilization can be tens of thousands of dollars for a big project like that. And if we can quickly assess the substructure, perhaps it's fine. And then, yes, great, go ahead. Um, but if the substructure isn't fine, we could avoid that mobilization fee. Um, I, I never meant to imply that the larger project didn't have that incorporated into it. It was just that we could potentially save some money by doing it that way. Yeah, I think you were really clear that we were, it was just to save some money. So so if we, let's say we approve this, we recommend this for approval, the board approves it. Um, I was looking at the like, drying and times when we can do this um, has to be over 50 degrees, no anticipation of, uh, of rain, we're looking at a summer, we 30 day, obviously it would probably be closed for 30 to 45 days or so, and it would be done in the summer. Yes. I mean, there's no way around it. We have to have the conditions. Yeah, to right. So if we, um, move this to the next month is it going to um let me is it going to impact the start date of the um of probably the, probably depending on the schedule for Stremler. Yeah. yeah what do you hope what are you thinking you will know in a month i don't know i don't know i'm just asking questions yeah I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, it's this, you know, it, it's pulls at your heartstrings that we just need to get it done. And then it pulls at your, just the finance part, the finance part of it, of it being so far over. Can we look, if, if we don't, if we don't send this to the board, if we send it to the board, the board's going to vote yes or no. Um, I don't know if we can talk with Joel a little bit more, see about possibly the funds, even if we have to do a special assessment in the exact amount of the money left in the fund, so it's going to be a net zero. This just to give us a little bit more time to look at it before jumping to a recommendation. Well, that, I mean, that would be the only purpose. Assuming those funds were available, couldn't the board, just like you did for the marina, couldn't the board just say, okay? we vote to move those extra funds into surf to cover. Honest, honestly, absolutely. That could happen. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. 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 If I mean, it's not probably going to have an additional. It's probably going to add this whole discussion is probably going to add an hour. Yeah. Um, that, it, it, and that's just simply, it. it's just a matter of time, you know, so that we don't have a board meeting that goes to 1130 at night. Cause yeah. I think this is really important. Yeah. Um, because and it's, it's more, it's, it needs to be looked at closer and it's going to invoke more discussion because it's not within budget amounts like all the rest of the capital requests are. Tonight, yeah, typically, no. I mean, equipment is much easier to, yes. because, I mean, it's much easier to budget too because it's five or six or eight years old. We're talking tennis courts that are 40 years old. And if you know how a reserve study works, is it just gets escalated every year based on what it was built on. It was built before we had all these permitting requirements, mm -hmm. probably built to residential grade, not commercial. And so this stuff has not been escalated to really account for all the repairs that are needed to this, you know, to all of these things. And so almost all of our actual capital improvements come in over this, this is not 
this is not going to be unique to. No. And so really what we need to be talking about is overall capital funding, not how do we just move some things around for this one project or the marina or That's whatever. It's going to be a whole budget discussion. It is. And it needs to happen way before the budget starts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I think we were kind of just shooting around with the executive committee that um, start chatter with that with the finance committee come, you know, March. So I, I mean, I, I'm Joanne, what do you think? Joanne, you're going to be, you're, you're part of all these meetings and what do you, and, and you know how they go. What is your feeling? Do you think this should be more of a capital request that might stand alone on its own for its own discussion during a meeting? Like maybe we could do it mid, you know, instead of having it with all the ones, the second board meeting next month, have it with the first board meeting next month. What are your, what are your feelings? Cause I know it, I, I, I do hear people saying, you know, having a four hour board meeting is, is a lot. And I do think this is going to um, have a lot of discussion around it. Are you feeling the same way or do you think it's going to just be an easy peasy approval? Uh, obviously I'm, I'm conflicted about this because I know the community wants courts. I know that they've waited a long time. Um, it's just the, the cost of this is, is high, very high. And it would make me happier to know that we had proactively determined our total spend this year uh, for it, and could accommodate it easily or that we could move those funds or find some, some different solution. So delaying it an, a couple of weeks does not seem like a bad idea so that more of those conversations could be had. Um, and it still gives us time because it's it's very early in the year um, to, to be you know, making this decision. So, so long as we do bring it up at that first meeting in March, I think we would be okay. And, and is there time then to have those additional discussions so that we could present a more um, overarching plan for, for where that extra money comes from out of the capital budget? I know, I mean, I, I'm happy to participate. I know what our expected um, needs are it's just these larger projects really that are hanging out and um, somewhat uncertain. The barn siding project, for example, um, you know, it's these, these larger projects that we have to make decisions about that are gonna ultimately decide what the total spend is this year. And, and Joanne, didn't we, maybe, maybe I was dreaming, but didn't we um, authorize Cool Runnings to do that check? Yeah, I'm just sorting that out right now. Okay. Do you have any idea mm -hmm. when they're going to do that? No, I don't. Uh, but it'll the the point is for them to do it quickly, right? I just have to confirm it. So right. it's, it'll be March. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll do it this month if we can get it in. Yeah, and um, Joel, <laughs> do you have anything to say? Uh, Joel is working on um a question that came up about one of the ladder uh capital requests that we're going to talk about okay um, so i just went in there to ask him that question and he was absorbed with something else so um no i think delaying this is a good idea and that my i have as an action item to schedule a meeting and laura you just need to know uh let me know from your group who wants to be involved with that and i'll get uh folks on our side mike and tyler and me and joel and we can all sit down and look overarchingly at the capital budget Okay, so do we have a, a mo? A, a, Sorry, excuse me, but Karen's had her hand up for quite a while, and oh, I have sorry. a quick question also. I, I have my screen. You were first, Stu. Go ahead. Uh, my my question, Joanne, is to Joanne is from Stremler. Is that actually a bid, and does the bid have a an expiration date on it? It is an actual bid. Yes, we put it out to bid, and we got bids back. So usually. They have a fairly, for something like this, a fairly long lead time because they understand our processes. Okay, thank you. So are we talking about delaying this and then the finance committee meet again, or could we approve it with the caveat that Lori and, and I guess any of us, but like 
in between this and and maybe not put it on the board docket for the next meeting, but one and and in the meantime, we explore additional funding options. One of which I would love to explore is the rec special assessment surplus that was left over from those five years. That seems kind of like an obvious chunk of money. Yes. Yeah, I think that's what we we can do right now is um, we can vote yes or no on advancing this to the board. The, okay. the, the bids themselves and the fact that this is the second and now that I know that you did it in 2019 slash 23rd, um, they're all, you know, it's convergent validity. This is what it costs. <laughs> So the memo um, itself, the request itself seems sound. And, and before we present it to the board, we wanna have a better idea of the impact on other capital spending that this approving this might, you know, what impact would it have on the overall capital spend? Does that sound reasonable? It yeah. does. It's just most likely gonna go up. I mean, not that that impacts our vote necessarily, but you know, like a, a, to me, that's a talking point to the board is like, this is probably just going to go up over time. So if it blows our budget for this year, we put it for next. You know, I mean, it, to me, it's almost a vote of this is how much it costs. We've had now three bids that have all kind of come in in the same general vicinity. Are we going to re repair the tennis courts or not? I think we do. Have, I mean, I think everyone here and correct me if speak up if it's not is in agreement that they need to be replaced what we're just looking at is when we present this when this goes to the board that it might have you know the question is going to be where's that extra money coming from well here's where the extra money is coming from so yeah. that what we're what we're not we're really not wavering on should it be done it's how is it going to be funded and if we can present something to the board saying this is this we're approving this. We were re recommending for approval. That this be done, and here's where we believe the excess funding will come from, and that's going to just take away the discussion at, at the board level of where's the money coming from. Right. I so I think that's smart. Yeah, I agree with that. A Stu, did you? Yeah. So, uh, you know take down yourself to figure out where that extra funding is going to come from before the board meeting next week you know Stu, i didn't hear your first half of your sentence oh uh, i was just asking if you were going to take it on or appoint somebody to take it on to figure out where the extra funding would come from before the board meeting next week yeah yeah definitely i, I can do that because i um can, can talk with joe joanne all right cool why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, we can do that. It, and and if anyone else wants to join me too, do we have more my you know just a couple of minds from this committee? Um, I know. I'm happy to if if available, especially if talking about rec special assessment stuff. I yeah. know it fairly well. So why don't we um, why don't we set up a time, Joanne? I can I can make myself available at any time as long as I have just a little bit of notice. Like not at noon say we're meeting at two, unless there's margaritas involved. Then sometimes I can. <laughs> okay. Well I will I will um work with Joel uh tomorrow to send out some times and yeah. then I can pick one um in the early part of next week, uh like maybe Tuesday. And that would be great. Yeah, and then we'll just sit down and figure it out. Um, but it sounds like we're ready to make a motion about tennis courts. <laughs> hey, what is that going to be? I'm trying to <laughs> scroll back and find it. I went ahead. Okay. Uh, where is it? I mean, nothing's going to be, until the board approves it, it's nothing. Yeah. Going to be. I'm, I'm just going to read it. This, um, do you think that the language in the motions needs to be changed at all, Joanne? No, I mean that it it's just uh, we're we're just we're just going to recommend it, but we are going to hold off putting it in front of the board. Correct. Yeah. We're going to wait yeah. until the first meeting in March, and 
at when we put it forward at that first meeting, um, there will be in a, a more language about where financing. Uh, yeah, how we finance it, where it comes from, okay. so that the board can feel more comfortable um, approving it. Hey, I'm just, I'm just going to read motion one, and I'm going to skip two for right now because it's talking about contract award. And since we're still working out some stuff, let's maybe let's not vote on that as a finance committee right now to execute the contract. I mean, obviously, we don't approve executing the contract anyway. But if we just talk about, oh, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong one. Shoot. I think we're going to have to do both of them. Because we won't, this committee won't meet again before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't know that the finance committee recommends approving well, the we contract do, anyway. That's kind of, just kind of approve the, yeah, recommend I the funds. Lady Kate that but I'm on the totally wrong no, no, I think I think we can do I think we can do um motion just just approve motion one Joanne because Karen's exactly right. We're we're recommending that the the money be allocated and then we're going to add where's it coming from. But really as a finance committee, we're not we don't really care about the contract. Okay. <laughs> I mean we care. we care, but we don't is it, it's not the recommendation to the board is not as important as the money. Okay. So we'll do um for motion one care. Do you want to make the motion? I can't find it. I am lost. I gotta hit. I, and... gotta I know. It's it it it's I think over. I've got, I think I've got it right here, guys. Let me let Go me right try. Ahead, Bob. There's there's two motions actually. Just do one just do, do the one. first one. Motion one. Motion one. Okay. So um I move that the finance committee recommend uh, to the board of directors approve allocation of $302,615.38 from CERV as a change order funding to Capital Code 9723.05 for construction of the core area tennis court resurfacing and fencing project. I all in favor? Okay. And just to remind anyone who may be watching or watching this later, we are not, because we're following Robert's Rules of Order for small committees, we are not um, required to do a second to the motions. Okay, so that is approved. Okay, three more, Joanne. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask to go a little out of order and do the bridge inspections first, because this is another easy one. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is to request funding for the 2024 biannual bridge inspections project. Uh, SPCA's 2024 budget includes $6,760 to complete bridge inspections every two years following national bridge inspect inspection standards. Um, SVCA's bridges were last inspected in February of 2022 and are due for reinspection this year in 2024. It is unknown if any evaluations were conducted before 2022. Uh, SVCA has four road bridges and eight golf course bridges uh, that need to be inspected by a certified bridge inspector. Integrity Structural Engineering completed these inspections in 2022 and have submitted a proposal to complete inspections again in 2024, and it's attached to the memo. In 2022, the inspection fee was $6,540. This year, their proposal is for 5,561. The reduction in cost is due to the fact that bridge details and data can be reused from the earlier 2022 inspection, um, giving us a 15% savings. Bridge inspections are proposed to be completed at the end of February with reports submitted in March. Two reports will be submitted to SVCA, one for the road bridges and then one for the golf course ones. So I ask that um, the board authorize $5,561 from roads for the 2024 biannual bridge inspections project. Uh, upon completion of the inspections, the submitted report will be shared with the board of directors. Any comments or questions? I know we don't have multiple bids, but I think the savings using the their data from 2022, I think this is uh, well within budget. Who's the contractor? 
uh, integrity. integrity. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is kind of like a preferred vendor situation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion that the finance committee move, um, recommend that the SBCA board of directors approve the allocation of $5,561 from roads for the 2024 biannual bridge inspections project and authorize the GM to execute a contract with Integrity Structural Engineering for their proposal dated February 5th, 2024. All those in favor? Rob? Okay. We're ready. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Yeah. And with that $1,000 in savings, we can add that to <laughs> the tennis court. There we go. We're one, 110 now. <laughs> Hey, every little bit. And there, there is a contingency in there too for overages, so it could come in less. <laughs> All right, we're we're narrowing up. Um, okay. this next one uh, is the 2024 road and drainage uh, construction uh, project, and um, we this is our major request for construction funding for 2024 road and drainage projects. On August 10th of 2023, uh, Sudden Valley uh, Community Association's Board of Directors approved Capital Code 9923.5 to proceed for designing and permitting the 2024 road and drainage project. Design and permitting will be finished this month, and this capital request is for the construction funding. SPCA's 2024 budget included $234,000 for Deer Run Lane asphalt overlay and an additional $624,000 to replace 48 culverts. Combined, these projects total 858,000. Now, um, in late breaking news, <laughs> this next, this next uh, sentence uh, may not be accurate. So Joel is gonna jump in um, and make corrections as we go along. Um, in addition, SVCA carried $354,759 forward from last year's road budget. Okay, that, that part isn't correct. So we're we're deleting that, Joel. We don't have any funds just, to carry forward. Just consider the last couple sentences. Just get rid of them. Okay. Or I mean, just ignore them. Okay. So I'm deleting those guys. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, so we, we're going to put a period after the eight hundred fifty-eight thousand. Yes. Thank you. So SBCA proposes to complete the following projects within this overall funding request. A million eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty six dollars and eleven cents is requested for Deer Run Lane asphalt improvements and replacement of fifty three culverts per P and W summary dated February eighth. And, and actually, uh, I'll, okay, so this is kind of the meat of the order for right. this one. So, so basically, on that background, that last sentence where it says this provides FC, F, FVCA with a total of one point two million. So that one point two million should actually be according to the roads budget. For 2024, for Deer Run Lane, this includes Deer Run Lane asphalt overlay, 234,000, and then all these culverts. So that's 858,000 scheduled for 2024. Okay, so are we cutting down the number of culverts then? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll be how many culverts? The number of culverts. How, how many? Um, I'll have to, the, the number changed again, so I'll have to recalculate that real quick. But I do know that the total, you know, the bottom line amount of how much we're going to spend on the first motion of this. Yeah, is what? It's going to be, so the motion one is going to be 699,000. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so motion one. It's going to be six ninety nine. Yeah, motion for, one for all day for Deer Run. Yeah, so this will will include Deer Run and the rest and culverts. Okay. And and we don't know how many culverts or do we? I'll calculate it in just a second, and then motion two and motion three will stay exactly the same. Motion four will be struck. Okay. Then I'll I'll calculate right now how many culverts. Okay, thanks. All right. So, so our budget is included 234,000 for Deer Run Lane asphalt overlay and 624 
for culverts. Yes. It's going to only be, what did you say, 699? Well, so, so it's going to be 699,000 for motion one. Motion two is, will stay 30,000. Motion three will stay 30,000. Motion four will be gone. And then another 90, approximately 90,000 will be for the bridge design and permitting for the bridge. That's, that's the next. Yeah. Right. So that's, so basically like in the 2024 budget. So what we have, I'm going to skip over on call engineering and stuff like that. So basically we have area Z bridge design and permitting budgeted for 31,200. We have Deer Run Lane asphalt overlay for 234,000 uh, potholes, but that's a separate line item. You guys already approved that. Then we have also a total of 624,000 for culverts budgeted. So and this, the ditches, culverts, and swales, that's a separate line item. So this um, motion is going to be for a total of 744,000. So this motion will be. Seven fifty nine, and I'll I can explain why now that I understand that that the carryover is is gone. The reason that we originally had budgeted for forty eight culverts is because we did not know when we were doing the budgets about the need to replace the area Z bridge. We prepared the 2024 budget using an advanced memo that Impact Design sent to us that primarily focused on culverts. But when we got the final report in October, we could see that they had prioritized the replacement of the Area Z maintenance bridge. And so that means in order to begin that work, we have to allocate um, funds for it, and that takes away from the number of culverts that we can address this year. Um, so the number of projects is the same, but the priority of those projects is a little bit different. So some of those culverts will be bumped into next year, but they will still remain on the on the list, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah so, what I, I, so I the could... culvert amount, Lori, will be 525,000 in this 889,200. So we'll spend 525,000 on culverts. Then we'll spend 234,000 on uh, Deer Run Lane overlay. And then it looks like we'll spend 130,200 on this Area Z bridge design and permitting work. So on the proposal, we're going to do um, the motion is going to be for seven hundred and fifty nine thousand. Correct. Okay. And are you you're gonna rewrite this, Joanne, before it goes to the board? Yes. Yeah. We still need to do motions two and three, though, because those are very important. Um, we need thirty thousand for Cold Spring drainage improvements and thirty thousand for the for uh, fees related to the renewal of the five-year programmatic permit and the five-year um, permit that allows us to maintain gravel surfaces uh, within the association. Right. So um, that's all that's included in the 759. No. Motions one, two, and three, Joel, right, are are separate. The first one is 759, and then we have 30 and 30, or is it 699 plus 30? So the first one is 699. Then you'll have motion two and three will stay the same, 30 and 30 apiece. Okay. And motion four, this contingency it's, will it's just gone. Be gone. It's gone. Yes. Okay. So, so 759 total. Okay. So yeah. I think I can read these motions. God bless you. Okay. Is yes. there any discussion? Okay. So motion one, the Finance, we move that the Finance Committee recommends to the SVCA Board of Directors approve the allocation of 699000 from 2024 capital budget for roads per PNW summary dated February 8, 2024, for Deer Run Lane replacement of um, designated culverts. Perfect. 
Okay. All those in favor? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, so, do you, Joel, do you need? So, I mean, look, it'll be approximately 40 to 45 culprits. Well, the... Joanne can put in the actual. Yeah. Um, okay, so motion to and move that the NS committee recommend to the SBCA board of directors approve the allocation of thirty thousand dollars from the twenty twenty four capital budget for roads for completing cold spring drainage improvements. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. And motion three, the finance committee moves that the SBCA rec recommends that the SBCA board of directors approve the allocation of thirty thousand dollars from the 2024 capital budget for roads for the renewal of five-year um, programmatic permit and renewal, my eyes are just going here, a renewal of five-year permit with Whatcom County allowance maintenance of gravel surfaces at three locations per p w summary dated February 8th, 2024. I hope I covered everything. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. So they'll be unanimous as, um, as I've read them, Joanne, you'll Go yeah, ahead. I'll refer back to the recording and update the memo. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and um, we'll sign off on all of these. Uh, we After we do the bridge design, I'll get um, them in there, Joanne, and we'll, we'll put okay. the numbers on and initial it. All right. Last so one. last one. This is very exciting. Um, the purpose of this request is to ask for funding for the 2024 bridge designs project. The 10-year road and drainage plan calls for work to begin on the replacement of the Area Z access bridge and culvert number four in, in 2024. Sutton Valley Community Association's 2024 budget includes $31,200 for the design and permitting of the Area Z access bridge, but does not include funding for culvert four because the final 10-year plan was not available when the budget was finalized. Work on culvert four was estimated by impact design at 86.5 but the estimate did not include utility coordination. PNW summary dated February 6, 2024, identifies specifics for both bridges and summarized the, summarizes the proposed expenses. As described in the background section of the roads and drainage project capital request memo that we just read, there, are, well, we're striking that, there are no unspent funds, sadly. Um, PNW's attached summary recommends that SVCA proceed with design and permitting of both locations in 2024. Uh, both locations cross Beaver Creek and are in close proximity. This creates efficiency because one set of permits can apply to both locations. One hydrologic analysis can be completed and applied to both locations. Geotechnical borings can be completed at the same time, saving mobilization dollars, and only one report will need to be prepared. And then the bridge designs are anticipated to be similar, allowing some shared details. PNW summary identifies a projected design and permitting budget of $131,003.84 to complete both locations. Our 2022 budget includes $31,200 for the Area Z Access Bridge, leaving a difference of $99,803.84. And we propose to take that um, needed funding um, from the roads budget, not from the carryover. Right, Joel? Yes, that's right. Yes. So we do need to authorize $131,003.84 from roads per PNW summary dated February 6, 2024, for design and permitting to replace the Area Z Access Bridge and Culvert 4 Bridge and authorize a general manager to execute contractors with Chinook Engineering um, and Northwest Geologic. Do we, are there just so few people that do this, that this isn't a bid situation? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. You mean, why didn't we have three engineering firms bid on it? Yeah. Are there just so few or what's the? There are very few. Um Chinook Engineering does hydrologic analyses in-house and on other bids that we've gotten from impact design, they have to uh, bring in a subcontractor to do those hydrologic analyses. And so Chinook engineering is cheaper 
um, which is probably why Tyler went with them for this proposal. That was, was two recent proposals that I looked at um, for the Austin Creek repair, where, where the hydrologic analysis made about a, a difference of about $15,000 between the two bids between Chinook and Impact. And the third engineering firm in our area, Wilson Engineering, has not responded to many of our requests for bid because they are just bursting at the seams with work. And they do not want to work on our projects or, or don't have the staff too. It's not like they don't like us. Okay. Are there any other questions about this? No? I feel like I'm at the end of my ability to <laughs> yeah. look, at, look at capital requests. And like, these all sound like the same project at some point. <laughs> all the various drainage, and I'm trying to keep it straight in my head, but. I'm just looking for also 131. So there's. So. Sorry. I'm just. I, no, no, I. I'm just. Again, it's all just um, blurring. Yeah, so there's too many numbers in here. Yes, I'm just, I'm the important missing. Number, the important number is what's there in the proposal. That's how much we need. The 131. The 131 to complete the design and permitting for the two bridges that are proposed this year. They're high priority bridges, Area Z and Culvert 4. And by doing them at the same time, we have a significant economies of scale. So it's very advantageous for us to do them in this way. It's worth bumping some culverts that we had previously planned to work on into next year so that we have funding from the roads budget for this specific project. Okay, so that's my question real quick. I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. So you need 131,000. The budget included 31,000 and the extra 99 is coming from... That's why we bumped down the number of culverts. Okay, so that what we just voted on, well, two times ago to reduce the number was to fund this. Correct. So okay. the total that we're requesting will still be within the total that is allocated for roads work in 2024. So I just don't mm -hmm. know if I'm missing something. So down where you have the proposal authorized 131, got that number, and then you, you. So you single out area Z access bridge is 38.8 and culvert four is 38.8 and then 13,000 to um, Northwest geologic. Those right, because are those are some contractors that, like before, um, before this year, Tyler would have just named those as subs and he would have paid them and we would have paid the 10%. But these are over my $10,000 limit so okay. we have to separately subcontract with these folks. So I think I got it. so thirty eight eight yeah. one. So there's other stuff in PNWs, obviously, because that doesn't add to one thirty one. That's, that's okay. where that's where I was yeah. I was tripping up. So basically, the PNW is like forty thousand three eighty three eighty four plus the thirty eight eight ten plus the thirty eight eight ten plus thirteen equals one thirty one. Three I put that in there to go to the board, like whatever the extra PNW stuff is, and just put it in one little chart because that is kind of hard to. Because yeah, I don't care. There are people on the board that ask for the yeah. extra. Yeah, yeah. It's in the PNW memo that's attached to this. Okay. <clears throat> Could we just uh, add that in here? Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll pull that out. That's a smart idea. Thank you. Because I, I just can, I just can tell you. It's um people are gonna just look at just eyeballing it. That's what I'm staring at it going, is that 131? Yeah. Like, I know I'm off. I'm not that tired. Um okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and add that in. Joanne, would you remind us where where is Colbert for? Um it's it's near the area Z bridge. It's um it's <clears throat> the same creek. Yeah. But down further. Oh, okay. So we're talking the the bridge when you go into 
to area Z and the maintenance air, uh, shops, and then further down is Culvert for them. Well, is it uh, off of Honeycomb? Yes, it's off of Honeycomb. Like, oh, like okay. the um, the garden area over there, isn't that the well, one? Well, that's that the area Z access bridge. But oh. if you go down further, it's in, I think Culvert Four is in the Honeycomb neighborhood, right there oh. on the creek. Okay, thank you. I guess that's Gate Nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah. Does anybody know off the top, like how much in roads did did we approve tonight? Assuming we approve this, like what what's the total? Joel, do you know? So uh, I have not. Did you say anything. just bridges? Is that what you were wondering? No, all of it, like oh, roads. all of roads. Yeah. I mean, so like, okay, so it'll be. Including culverts, right? Well, yeah, all of it. Of things oh, okay, it's, that's easy. Yeah. Um, fast response drainage, CVC funds, on-call engineering, pothole repairs, road and drainage project, bridge design, and bridge inspections. So one million ninety-nine thousand two eighty. One million ninety-nine thousand. And what was our, I don't have it in front of me. What is our total roads? budget in the in the roads capital it's uh any plan actually um this that one bridge for 131 200 actually that's that just brings us a thousand dollars over the entire roads budget for 2024 okay so then is this everything like we're kind of like front loading it approving everything because then we got to get everybody in place and scheduled and whatever Right, because our window is small for yeah. a lot of things. Yes, that is exactly okay. our intent. And that's why we're um, overworking you with all these requests tonight. Yeah. I mean, this is not the first time I think I have seen a whole bunch of roads requests at once. I think this is just the most at any time. But yeah, I, I remember February's being busy. Uh, thank you for putting all the work into this to get yes. it in a timely manner. Actually, in March, we're going to do all of surf. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will be at that meeting anyway, so go ahead. And we'll Please do, in fact. <laughs> I aim to be outstanding in every way. So <laughs> I now and have the record for most capital requests mm -hmm. for uh, the finance <laughs> committee yeah. ever. The most that I've seen in one meeting. We're under three hours. All right, let's motion this. Okay, ready? Motion yeah. move that the move that the finance committee recommend that the SBCA board of directors approve the allocation of one hundred and thirty one thousand three dollars and eighty four cents from the twenty twenty four capital budget for roads and design and permitting per Pacific Northwest summary dated February sixth, twenty twenty four, for the twenty twenty four bridge design project. All in favor. Okay, unanimous motion to move that the finance. Sorry, do you think we need to do these? Because it's, I don't know, maybe we do. I just. It has a dollar amount in there. So okay. I think. Okay, yeah, should. yeah. All right. So um, move that the finance committee recommend to the SBCA board of directors authorize the general manager to execute contracts with Chinook Engineering for their proposals dated February 2nd, 2024. With total amounts not to exceed seventy-seven thousand six twenty. All those in favor? Okay. Move that the finance committee recommend to the SBCA board of directors that they authorize the general manager to execute a contract with Northwest Geologic PLLC for their proposal dated February fifth, twenty twenty-four, with a not to exceed amount of thirteen thousand dollars. All approve. Okay, that was motion three. All approve, unanimous. Okay. I motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Karen, for Thank you very, very much. All of you. Appreciate and it. I will um Karen will set a time with um, Joanne and Joel where we can talk about okay. that stuff. Well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And um that's it. We'll Good see night. you guys. Good night, Sun Valley. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.